Okay, on this video, we're going to cover something that's really quite simple, but I get a lot of questions about. And it's actually a fairly important topic that just has no good in-game tutorials. So, World Singer sponsors the topic by saying, Discuss CC skills. It's something that took me a long time to figure out, and especially playing the marionette, it seems a lot of people don't know about CC skills. Dan Pillow says, Despite being a casual veteran playing since launch, I struggle with CC skills and break bars. All right, so what are these terms? What do they mean? And how can you practice them? I'll show you. So what is CC? It stands for just crowd control. That's all the term means. It's kind of a hangover from older MMO days, really. Um, but what that's referring to is any kind of ability or skill we might have that's not about damage, but it's about controlling the crowd of enemies that we're fighting. It's about manipulating their capabilities or their position. So obviously, I can auto attack this Doliac here and I'll just do damage, and if all I care about is doing damage, then that's fine. I can also go through a lot of my abilities and just do damage, like my longbow too, just does damage. But maybe I don't really care about damage, maybe I just want to keep someone away from me because they're going to do a lot of damage to me. In which case, I have, say, this skill here, point blank shot. So this, longbow 4, has knockback on it, and you can always read a tooltip to know whether it has some kind of CC there. So you'll see that this actually, depending on how close to the enemy I am, I can push them away. So if I run right up to say this one Doliak here, this guy, and I use the longbow 4 on him, I basically didn't do any damage, but I knocked him completely to the other side of the pen. If he's attacking me and doing a lot of damage, he's going to have to run all the way back now. Now this isn't an AoE ability or anything, so if I'm just trying to kill the whole pen as fast as possible, I probably don't want to use this off of cooldown. I only want to use it in the specific scenarios where it's actually beneficial to me. So there are many skills like this. If we go to our other weapon set here, this is my axe offhand, you'll see, again, the skill 4. It's not always that it's skill 4. Kind of does the reverse. This one has a pull on it. So what we're going to do is, and this one's AoE, we're going to throw out our axe, which will boomerang away from us, and then on the rebound, it pulls everyone into us, as you can see there. And what that does is that sets everyone up for, say, an axe 5 or something, where we can blow them all up, you know, in, in one big chunky ability. So that's kind of the way the axe works. You have a setup ability, a CC ability on Path of Scars, which also does big damage on its own as well, for what it's worth. And then, once everyone's balled up, you can use, say, this Whirling Defenses here. So let me just demo that to you again. Say that fur fly over there, we want to pull him over. He's quite far away, but we can throw our axe out just as far away too. We can throw our axe all the way to his location, and when it hits him, it will boomerang back and pull him. And he kind of got caught a little bit on the hill there, but we managed to move him towards us. We could even pull someone right to our feet, and then immediately weapon swap to the longbow and push them away again. So what I just showed you there are kind of colloquially known by the community as hard CCs. Hard CC, like the push and the pull, hard CCs because they have immediate, sudden, upfront impact that will do something right away, and, and usually something quite severe. So for example, pet swapping over to my Black Mower here, you'll see that his F2 skill, this Screech, this has a daze on it. Daze is another example of a hard CC. It will prevent your enemies from using any skills. They can still run around, but they can't use any skills. And there are a few varieties. Here on screen, I'll, I'll put a little uh, table up. This is from the wiki, which is a very useful resource. And so as we go through, you'll see that there's stuns. Stun is like daze. They can't use skills, but they can't move either. Very, very powerful. You've got knockdowns. Uh, you can trigger knockdowns in many ways. For example, everyone can trigger a knockdown these days if they have the second mount, the, uh, the Springer. That knocks a target down when you use the cannonball ability. So, for example, we run over this fur fly. He'll be on the floor. He won't be able to do anything. His animation kind of went a little bit buggy there. But trust me, that, that was a knockdown. We also have um, pulls, as I've already shown you. Knockbacks, as I've already shown you. Launch is kind of a really special one where you're, what you'll do is you'll knock them away and in the air at the same time. And that's kind of cool in PvP because you can actually move down state bodies. If the uh, launch is high enough, you can actually put full damage out or if you throw someone over a cliff or something. Uh, there aren't actually any player skills that make you launch that high right now in the game. But sometimes enemies will, will launch you that high. Then there are two kind of underwater ones, floating and sinking. Uh, there is actually an ability that lets you float out of uh, water as well. One of the, the elite specializations get that, which is pretty cool. And then there are two more kind of hard CCs. Uh, there's fear, which makes someone run away from you, and taunt, which makes them run into you. So you see, all these all affect people's positions and t take control away from them in very, very dramatic ways. And they're all useful just in regular combat like you're seeing here. That's all that CC is. There's also such a thing as a soft CC, 
And so those would usually be conditions, okay? So, for example, if you look at my utility skills, I have this skill here, Muddy Terrain, where I throw mud all around the area. And what that will do is that will cripple, that will slow, and that will immobilize anyone around me where I, I land it. So, this is known as a soft CC, in that it still kind of affects where they can move and how they can move. You know, it slows them all down massively. It, it, it kind of aggravates them in a big way. But because it's not like a big, hard, immediate effect, they're known as soft CCs. This here as well, this frost trap, this puts chill out. This is another soft CC. And this one actually does a little bit of damage as well. And you can see how much we've affected them there with that. So do be aware that there's two different kinds of CC, hard and soft. The soft ones, here's your table of those, these are all generally condition-based. And you'll see that fear and taunt appear here as well. Uh, some people will call fear and taunt a hard CC, some will call it a soft. It kind of depends on the context that you're talking about. So that's all the CC are. You can play around just in general gameplay and have fun with that. That's a pretty basic MMO concept. Now let's talk about defiance bars. None of the dolly acts that you see I've been fighting right now have defiance bars. They appear below the health bar of whatever target that you're fighting. And so it can be kind of tricky to find a defiance bar to practice on. There are many places you can go and many things you can do. Here's my recommendation for the easiest, fastest defiance bar practicing. On the top left of your screen, you'll see a bunch of icons. Click the PvP one. Now, don't worry, we're not actually going to be PvPing. We're just going to another map, this PvP lobby here. You click this. You can always leave this lobby in a second and return exactly to where you were in Corteria for free. It doesn't cost anything or take any time except a loading screen. So you can hit this to go to the PvP lobby. And here, you could now click exit to return. Or you could take advantage of a bunch of practice tools that they have here. So if you open the map and you look at this place here, the Hall of Memories... There's a little freeway point that you can go to, and there's a bunch of little combat test areas you can go to, where there are golems that I can fight. You see, like, this light golem here? I can shoot him, I can knock him back, I can treat him just like the dolly axe a second ago, except he won't fight back. And then once he dies, he'll be gone for, like, just one moment, and then he'll return. So this is a useful place to test out just skill interactions. The balance is a little bit different here, so do be careful. But generally speaking, all your skills work 99% the same. So here we have a heavy golem. And the heavy golem, you'll see, has a second bar beneath it. He has a defiance bar. So what's the idea here? This is an enemy that is resistant to crowd control. All of the forms of crowd control I, second, I said a second ago, like blinding and chilling and crippling and all of that, he's basically immune to all of it. You'll find a lot of enemies around PvE in this state. Like if you're in a dungeon, or if you're in a raid, or you're in a strike mission, or you're in the open world and there's meant to be a big boss, it's an especially important thing to have in cooperative environments for the MMO, because otherwise, if you think about it, let's say I have 50 people all attacking one, the same boss, we could just have them all slamming random CCs and knockbacks and pushes and pulls and knockups, and over time, the boss is just not going to be able to do anything. It's just going to be standing there completely incapacitated, perma-stunned, Perma blind, perma immobilization, and so on. So it's a mechanic that means lots of people now can contribute to an enemy, and there are special ways in which you can stun them. And it basically just works like a health bar. So, for example, if I point blank shot this guy, you'll see he didn't move, but this second health bar went down and then started regenerating. Here I have a spike trap. The spike trap launches people when they are placed in it. That's a hard CC. Watch when he triggers a spike trap. He didn't get launched, but his bar chunked down. So, now, what if I chain lots of my CCs together to try and get this whole health bar down? What if we use everything we've shown off in the video? We go with the spike trap, the point blank shot, we get the mower to screech, we use our axe four. Well, you see, we break the bar. He gets stunned and exposed. He still didn't move, but he gained those two effects, stunned and exposed. So the stun means that he's not using any abilities. We would have interrupted him. Exposed means he takes massively increased damage for that period of time. And then we can start doing our regular hits and we can blow him up. You'll also notice after we successfully did the break bar, the mechanic's now on cooldown. His bar is a different color as it recharges. When it gets back to the top, we'll be able to go again. So let me tell you guys, when you are in open world events, when you're in dungeons, when you're in raids, it is always a good idea to try and deal damage to a break bar, as long as it's in a damageable state, that is, when the color is blue and normal looking, like here. You will do a lot of break bar damage as a group if just everyone is contributing. And everyone contributing means that you can have a lot more time to do damage for free, where they're not running around or doing anything, 
and your damage is massively boosted. Now that's both condition damage and power that gets boosted. So it's really useful. If you don't know about this mechanic, you might be in a group scenario where the break bar's nearly broken, but you didn't do anything. And now it's regenerating. And everyone else is thinking, oh my god, I threw all these abilities. I did a spike trap. I did a, a point blank shot. I did all the stuff that my profession can do. And it was pointless because overall the group didn't quite get far enough. And now he's just regenerating. And that's the main frustration most people have with the game. If you don't know about this mechanic, that's how you can end up kind of screwing people. So just keep an eye on the break bar. And if it looks like people are trying to break it, you should do something that contributes. The other thing to think about are soft CCs. So hard CCs chunk the bar down. Soft CCs drain the bar. So here you see this is what my muddy terrain does. And this is what my frost trap does. The more of these soft CCs we throw up, like here we have slow, chill, and cripple, you'll see he's draining away, see? And eventually it broke on his own there. So the more players you have in a Zerg, the more people are around, the harder these bars scale, and the less impact you'll see the soft CCs do. Hard CCs are nearly always the best thing to go for, especially if the break bar only appears for a short while during the fights. But do remember that maintaining these kinds of conditions can also be incredibly useful and here I'll throw a, a, a grid on screen again here these were all the soft CC's I've actually listed these or rather the wiki has actually listed these in order of potency so cripple you can find everywhere on loads of traits loads of skills and it's the weakest then there's weakness which against regular enemies would create glancing blows and stuff well that drains a bit faster blind chill now remember they're immune to these effects he's immune to blind he's immune to chill but it does have this degenerative property and they slowly get stronger and stronger until you see there that fear is the strongest of them all now just like with the soft cc's all the hard cc's have different potencies too like a quarter of a second days that you can spam on say a thief isn't going to be as strong as a massive four second knockdown from a warrior using a backbreaker with their hammer wiki has a table for all of these too i recommend you guys check out if you're really curious but but because the potency changes based on how long the CC lasts as well as what type it is, it's kind of messy to look at on screen on the video here. Don't let veterans overcomplicate or bog you down with trivia on this one. The rule of thumb is this. The more incapacitating the hard CC is and the longer it lasts, the more break bar damage it will do. That's all you need to know. Now, if, uh, if you think about it, now that you have this information, when you look at your traits, you'll realize there's lots of fun decisions you can make. So for example, as a ranger for beast mastery, I've got here a bunch of like quality of life healy things and a bit of damage. But if you look at the top, this is when I use a beast skill, I blind. And when I use a beast skill, I weakness. And when I use a beast skill, I taunt. And so now I have a bunch of new soft CCs that I can use. So if I throw these, my trap out and all that kind of stuff, and now I have my pet use his ability, Look at how many I bomb out. Look at how fast the break bar gets broken just by stacking all of these together because now I have so many effects all on that one, all, all on these couple of tools available to me. I really recommend you guys have fun looking through your profession at what it does. Practice on this golem. If someone else is practicing on the golem, don't worry. There's lots more up the road. Just have a little bit of a wonder. And when you're done, make sure you exit the lobby and come back. You might like to test in regular PvE as well, just so that you can get a sense of how your gear feels and how the PvE balance is, which again can be slightly different. Um, so there are a few places I recommend. Unfortunately, there aren't any great ones. I wish there was like a target du d dummy or something that you could just fight at Lion's Arch. There's not. Uh, in Fractals, you can set up golems if you go through some panels. It's a bit fiddly and annoying, but you can do that. In the Aerodrome, you can go to a special training a area that allows you to set up a golem to practice, uh, but it's a little bit annoying. Often while you're wandering around in the open world, and especially if you're in a Zerg where events are scaling up, like in Ore, you'll find champions. Champions nearly always have break bars, so watch out for those. You can try to solo some of those champions for what it's worth, especially if they're in the early game maps. The other thing to watch out for are hero challenges. Sometimes they have them. Most of the time in Corteria, like here with this Windmill King, they won't. But they're great because they're repeatable. And in the expansions, many do. So they're great to practice on once you get to that content. Though a word of warning, the Heart of Thorns ones are pretty hard. POF's much better. There's like a hero challenge here against an Awakened. You can practice break bars against him. There's a hero challenge against a Jin up in the sands up here that you can fight. You'll notice that the break bar works a little bit differently with this Jin. Once you break it, the animation changes a bit and you'll realize it's gone for good. Breaking the break bar has made him permanently weaker. And when we mouse over, it actually explains that, that we're removing his fire armor. There are a ton of fire Jin you 
can practice on in this map, even outside of the hero challenge. It's right at the start of the expansion. Just head up here to the north where this temple is. Dungeons are also a great place to practice. If you're a new player and say you're doing Ascalon Catacombs for gear, like healer gear or monk runes or something, dungeons are a brilliant place to learn about breakpaws because most enemies have them. And they're so easy, it's not crucial you break the break bar. So you can just kind of play around and feel how, how that looks uh, while in a team setting and there's, there's really no pressure on you there. So dungeons are brilliant. You'll find them in fractals very regularly where they're much more important to get through cleanly. You'll find them in strike missions, in raids, as I mentioned, the open world. Just keep an eye out as you're playing. They're a big part of the game. So let's return to that idea of a special break bar on that gin. Yeah, most break bars in the game work exactly like the golem we demoed on, but sometimes they do get fancy. And that's where the game can be really fun. They're always broken in the same way, but sometimes a break bar is only breakable for a few moments to like interrupt a single ability. For example, here in Heart of Thorns, you have these Mordrum Punisher guys. They're gonna charge up a big hammer swing and only during the hammer swing can you break the break bar. The rest of the time you can't. But if you manage to interrupt it, you'll do a lot of good stuff. Heart of Thorns actually opens when break bars were introduced with this interesting idea of a Mordrum on a mount and breaking the break bar should dismount him. I actually think this particular interaction is bugged, but you get the idea and the tooltips are still there. Some Wyverns in Heart of Thorns are going to try and fly off into the sky and nuke you with fire, but if you break their break bar, you'll knock them on the ground. You can actually, actually practice that here in uh, World vs. World on the Desert Borderlands. Very easy to get to, but these are kind of tricky fights, so be careful. Here on the footage, though, you'll see I break the break bar, and the Wyvern, instead of flying off, actually uh, falls on the floor. That can be relevant in some big events, too. Uh, later in Heart of Thorns, there are these Chuck Bracer things that create a tether, making an ally of theirs invulnerable until you break the break bar of the bracer and then he instantly dies like the break bar is its HP and there's so much more so just keep an eye out what you'll notice is that you can mouse over a break bar to get a sense of the effect it will cause but generally the rule of thumb is this if the break bar is there and it looks like other people are breaking it you should go for it too maybe you're wondering at this point what can I do that CC's if you don't know the answer to that I suggest you play around with your traits play around with your weapon skills and do some mousing over. Failing that, again, the wiki has a brilliant grid that lists every profession skill that has every CC. I don't know whether that's really necessary to look at, but you guys can if you like. I will always recommend the wiki. And remember, you can always get to it in-game by typing slash wiki and then say defiance bar. If you type this exactly into your chat box in game and press enter, you'll be given a tutorial that gives you all kinds of bonus and extra trivia, everything I've explained and all the profession skills that you're looking for. So there you have it guys, have fun in Guild Wars 2 now that you know this uh, brilliant mechanic and I'll see you on the next one very soon. Don't forget to check out the playlist view and once again thanks to World Singer and everyone who thumbed this comment up. If you guys have your own ideas to sponsor a topic, let me have them down below. I'm eager for as many as you want. See you next time guys.